Hello Commanders and welcome to part 2 of our Star Wars Legion Invasion Force build journey brought to you by Alphavart Gaming. As always, my name is Phil. A quick recap on the previous video, we managed to get one full unit of B1 Battle Droids built and two droids from Unit 2 in the first three hours of this 24 hour hands-on building and painting challenge. As mentioned in part one, we wanted to do this in one long session, but Mrs. Advark said no, so we're doing it in multiple stages. In part two, we're aiming to finish off the three remaining units of B1 Battle Droids, build the Magna Guard and the A18. And if we have time in this three hour session, hopefully we're looking to get General Grievous built. So let's go ahead and see how well we get on with this plan. Continuing on from part one with the B1s, we will still be doing these by unit at this point so that we can see some real progress when the unit is all arranged off camera. We mentioned this before, but when building in bulk like this, it's always best to try and get a good system in place for building, but also to make sure you have a real sense of progress so that you can maintain your motivation. Now we snipped off all of the arms and weapons and sorted them into little boxes so that when it comes time to put them together, it's easy to identify which arms go into pairs. While this is not strictly important for which body they go with, the arms only go together, as far as we know, in one configuration of left and right, so we wanted to make sure that it was easily to hand to identify. Two units down, this is the halfway point with the B1s. Anyone who's built them will know that they are not the easiest models to build, as while they don't have a huge amount of parts, they are incredibly thin and tricky to get together. You will notice that we've been using a combination of super glue and plastic glue for this. We've been super gluing one arm in place, then using the slower drying time of the plastic glue to give us time to manipulate the second arm into the right place. Three units down, the end is in sight, we can finally start building something different. I don't think I'll be buying any more B1s after this, except possibly a couple of packs of the upgrades, for the additional flexibility in those packs. However, not sure if I'll ever truly need more than 54 B1 battle droids.
And there we go, four units of B1 battle droids done. Only three hours and 50 minutes to get through those. Or to put it another way, four minutes a model. When you say it like that, doesn't really seem too bad, to be fair. Now I do like the B1s, they were interesting to build at first. I do feel that possibly I'll break up the process with other units in between each one, should I ever find myself building multiple units of them again. Although I hope that I'm never building this many B1s in one sitting ever again. Anyway, let's move on to a new unit for me to build, and that is the Magna Guard. I've been really looking forward to building these as they look really cool, and I like the options you have with these. Now you can build two of the heavy weapons options with this if you wanted, but we'll be doing one of each type of the Magna Guard to give us more flexibility with how we want to build our lists in future. I am a big fan of the fact that you have all the parts to make the different options within the expansion packs, which is not seen in other miniature companies' packs. Now where better to start with the unit leader with his precision laser dart ready to take shots at oncoming enemies before beating them down with an electro shock staff. I really like the way both halves of the body and cloak go together whilst this still gives a modicum of posability with the arms. Now as this is just the one unit, we decide to snip off all the parts we need for each individual model and assemble this before moving on to the next model. This keeps all the pieces together so they don't get mixed up. You can however do it as we did with the B1s and have some small tubs to hand snip all the pieces into so that you have them ready to go for the next model. The RPS-6 Magna Droid looks great with this heavy weapon and we can imagine this putting some serious hurt on any unit foolish enough to get within range and line of sight of it. Now the variation of poses for these models is a nice change from the B1s, whilst having standing, running and kneeling can look quite similar, these all look very dynamic and ready for action. Now we had to take a little bit more care with the Electro Whip as this is quite a flexible part. This is going to make it interesting to paint as we intend to use some dry brushing at that stage but it is still a fantastic model. Now while we're working our way through the models let's have a look at the cards you get for the Magna Droid. So you're going to get one copy of the Magna Droid unit card. You're also going to get a copy of the IG-100 Magna Guard for that additional trooper. The RPS-6 Magna Guard and the Electro Whip Magna Guard. Unfortunately, you only get one copy of the unit card in this, unlike the main expansion pack. And there we go, 50 minutes down and we have our fifth unit of the set built and ready for priming. Now to build the model that we've been most excited for, the AAT tank. Now we've watched a few painting guys for this one and the main thing that we've seen is this can be sub-assembled into three parts. The turret, the main hull and the fore section. To make it easier to paint we will look to take this approach as well. Luckily the fore section is just two pieces and the turret is pretty obvious to keep off. 
The main hole connects to the fore with four hefty pegs, so that makes it pretty easy to leave unglued at this time. Now we built this from the fore section up. We can easily say that if this pack had come with four of these instead of the B1s, then we would have been more than happy to mass build these. Also, four AATs would look very imposing on the table in a grand size army. Now looking at cards for the AAT, you get the unit card for this as you would expect. You also get the armor piercing shells, bunker buster shells, high energy shells. Unfortunately you only get the Oom series droid pilot, so no lockdown or T-series tactical droid pilot in this pack, which is a bit of a shame because it would have been nice to have that flexibility, but you get the other four cards in there. Now all of the little greeblies on this model were fantastic to put on as they were clear where and which way round they went as one peg was square and the other round. I'm not sure if I've ever found it this easy to build such a large model in the past. This thing is huge compared to infantry units and we think that it looks great. Not a lot of options for customization off the sprue here, but you can have this with or without the Oom series droid pilot standing out of the turret hatch. And when building this, we realized that every single one of our droid unit leaders had his electro binoculars the wrong way around, but that's droids for you. Initially, we wanted to see if we could hinge the top hatch for the AAT, but decided on gluing it open as we're not that confident in being able to do this without ruining the model. Looking good to get Grievous done before the six hour mark and making good time on completing within 24 hours. Mm -hmm. 
Now this is our second General Grievous and we wanted a different pose for this one. Our first model we went with dual lightsabers on the left with his DT-57 Annihilator in the right hand and the cloak. Very menacing. With this one we wanted a more movie accurate version so we went with the uncloaked 4 lightsaber variant. Can anyone else say General Kenobi? Those of you that have built Grievous know that he is a bit fiddly, there are quite a few small and delicate pieces, but the flexibility and pose really make up for that, as he's not rigidly set in how he should go together. This is especially so with the arms, as there are ball joints, meaning that you can get him to look just how you want. To give him a little more menace and customization, we did dig out one of our spare clone trooper helmets and file down the back to place on the base for him to stand on. This makes it look like he's been in combat and taken on some clones. This can be a nice touch if you do play multiple factions and have some spare parts. A shame you don't have much variation in the droids to do this for your clones. For Grievous's card, it's pretty straightforward. You're going to get his unit card and his DT-57 Annihilator card. And there we go, six hours in, we have seven of the nine units completed. In part three, we will build the two Droid King units. We'll only be building the walking variant for this series, and we'll be looking at doing the rolling version later down the line, as whilst it's nice to be able to sort them out on the board, you do have a token for it. Again, thank you for watching. Part three will drop very soon, and hopefully we can get on to painting the models. We'll be priming them off camera, ready for the next section. A note on this will be priming the B1s and the AAT with a white rattle cam primer, ready to add skeleton hawk contrast paint. The Magna Guard, Droidicos and Grievous will be primed in a light grey rattle cam. Don't forget to click like on the video, subscribe to keep up to date, and if you do like what we're doing here at Out of Art Gaming, you can support us on Patreon with the link in the description below. But we will see you next time.